a windswept Atlantic shore centuries ago. Seabird cries fill the air, yet one bird stands apart for flippers and curious eyes. This was the great ark, scientifically called Pinguinus impenis, a giant among seabirds that once flourished across the North Atlantic. Through waves, harvested fish, and nested in dense colonies on rocky islands from Newfoundland to Iceland and beyond. Archaeological evidence etched its presence into human history, from cave carvings in France to bone necklaces in Newfoundland, and even remains at Neanderthal hearts. Across millennia, the Great Ark was woven into human culture and survival. However, the Great Ark is no longer present. It is extinct having vanished, and we are left with fragments, bones, skins, stories, and now DNA, a bird of significance and story. The Great Ark was more than a seabird. Its bones, cleaned and preserved, tell us that they were a good source of food for humans, even consumed by Neanderthals more than 100,000 years ago. In Newfoundland, remains in graves reveal a deep cultural significance. Over 200 orc beaks adorned a single burial, perhaps as regalia or ritual. In the 18th century, cod fishermen called the bird common on the banks of Newfoundland. The naturalist Francois Le Masson du Parc described baited hooks bringing down grey tocks and accompanied by illustrated depictions. These archives offer glimpses of a time when the bird seemed immortal. Yet, one vivid eyewitness might capture it more vividly. Aaron Thomas, aboard HMS Boston in 1794, described the cruelty of feather collecting owl. You skin them alive. You burn them alive also. Oh, this was not survival, it was slaughter. The coming storm for centuries, the Great Ark maintained a large and stable population. Genetic data confirms it. In an old DNA study, researchers sequenced complete mitochondrial genomes from 41 individuals across the species range, from the Pleistocene through the Holocene. The findings were that genetic diversity remained high. Population structure was steady with no signs of decline or bottlenecks, even during periods of climatic change. In short, until humans arrived, the bird thrived. However, starting in the 16th century, when Europeans discovered the massive colonies numbering in the hundreds of thousands, the bird's fate changed forever. It became an exploit. Meat on tables, fat for lamps, down for pillows, eggs plundered relentlessly. The illusions of abundance mask the tragedy. It wasn't until 2019 that the full story came into focus. Leading scientists reconstructed population dynamics using mitochondrial DNA, data from those 41 historical specimens. Their analyses reveal that even without environmental threats, human harvesting alone was enough to doom the species. The model showed that annual removal of just 5 to 10 percent of the population could drive extinction within centuries, which aligns chillingly with historical killing rates. What once felt mythical, the extinction of a plentiful bird, was revealed as preventable, avoidable, human-caused. By the early 19th century, scientists and collectors scoured the world for orcs, skins, eggs, skeletons, the trophies to mark extinction in progress. Then came the final chapter on LD Island, June 1844. Three Icelandic men, John Branson, Sigurdur Islifsson, and Ketil Ketelsson, were sent to capture specimens. They found a pair incubating a single egg, one man said it strangled him far and he made no cry. The last orc died along with its unborn history. For generations, the skins were lost. Scholars speculated Fuller in 1999 listed five candidate skins across museums. Then a DNA breakthrough. Mitochondrial genomes matched the male great orc organs preserved in Copenhagen to the skin in Brussels. 
one mystery solved. The female skin remains lost. Today, fewer than 80 skins and around 75 eggs remain scattered across museums. Each piece, each bone, each genetic sequence is a fragment of a vanished world. The Great Ox extinction is not just a relic of history, it's a warning. The power of human overexploitation was enough to extinguish even a robust and widespread species in a few centuries. Abundance is no safeguard. It is the greatest lie of all, but the bird's memory endures in museums, in DNA, in law. Early conservation laws arose partly because of the Olki. Today's protections for seabirds and habitats trace their roots back to this story. This maritime being now lives only in stories, etched in bone, preserved in DNA, weighed in memory. Its silence echoes our responsibility. The Great Ark taught us that unchecked exploitation can silently and swiftly erase a species. But science lets us hear it again through DNA, through history, and through lessons still urgent. If you enjoy these videos, comment, tap the like button, subscribe, and ring the bell so you do not miss our next stories. Do you have stories you would like us to cover in the next videos? Drop them in the comments. We love to hear your ideas. Until next time, stay curious and keep on covering the hidden stories of our planet's journey.